Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about the application process for your first job. You know, how to fill in the application, what to think about, uh, the interview, the simulator test, basically everything that you want to know about before getting that first job. So stay tuned. Right guys, I also have some great news. Uh, I just want to say that before we start this video that I have gone into cooperation with a UK based company that provides applications for preparations for airline interviews, flight school interviews, basically everything that you need to know in order to structure and prepare before you get into the interview situation, okay? I have the links here in the subs sorry in the description of the video so if you just go down there it's the only way to get this application is by clicking those links it's not available on the app store right check it out and i'm going to be talking today about all of the stuff that you can find inside of this application in but in much greater detail so an overview today and if you want to know more and want to prepare thoroughly then get this application and check it out right so um, the first thing that you need to realize is that most airlines today will have a online based application process. All right? It means that you need to go into the individual airline that you're looking for. You need to click the link on their careers page that says apply here for whatever first officer or direct entry command job or whatever it might be. Now, be very, very thorough when you go through that application process because you need to realize that if you're applying for, let's say, a cadet job, you know, a job as a first officer with minimal hours, it's not only going to be you who is applying for that, there's going to be thousands of people applying for that job. So what the airlines do is they will shave off all of the applications that haven't been submitted correctly. That includes the size of your picture, exactly all of the th stuff that they're asking you to provide, all of that has to be in the application. So make sure that you take your time and fill in the application thoroughly, okay? Fill up all of the little notes that they are described in order to do it correctly. So once you have filed your application, you can expect there to be you know, a fairly long waiting period before you get called. It's all depending on how badly the airline needs pilots, you know. But expect anything from a couple of weeks to a couple of months before you hear anything back. And you need to use that time to prepare yourself. Uh, you should be knowing everything there is to know about the airline that you're applying to. What is their fleet size? What kind of aircraft do they fly? What kind of operation do they do? Do they have mixed passenger and cargo? Is it only passenger? What are their hubs? Um, and what kind of philosophy do they have? All of that, the more you prepare, the better you are gonna come off because it's likely that the airline will ask you questions about their airline to check that you know what you're getting yourself into. So use that period, right? Also, find out everything you can about the application process. So that includes getting this app, uh, checking the internet, there might be peep rune forums where they discuss um, the application process for your particular airline. Just read everything you can, get as much information as you possibly can and prepare yourself, right? When you then get that letter saying that we would like to invite you to an interview at this at this date, make sure that before you go to the interview, you are properly rested, that you've had a good breakfast before you go and that you have some snacks with you to make sure that you keep your sugar levels you know, at a good level throughout the day. Otherwise, your performance will start to drop before the end of the day, and the end of the day might be when you're doing your simulator session or whatever. So make sure that you keep yourself fueled up. A lot of people forget this, and it, it can have some really sad outcomes. So remember it, okay? Now, so what can you expect then? Well, it's very, it's very likely that the first thing that you will be faced with is some kind of either technical test or just an interview, okay? If it's a technical test, there's not much to it. You just have to answer the questions that you're getting. Any kind of computer-based testing, make sure that you follow the instructions closely and you do the best you possibly can. That's all you can do, guys. For the interview, um, it's likely that the interview is going to start with some softening up questions. So they will ask you about yourself, uh, the reason that you have applied for the airline. So when you're answering these kind of questions, 
it is important not just to give a straight answer, but to give an answer that indicates a little bit how you're thinking. So if they're asking you why you've um, applied for this airline, then you should have a fairly elaborate answer about how you have you know, researched them, how you have talked to your spouse, um, that you've planned your life around living in wherever this is, um, you know, and that it suits your career goals and your long-term goals of what you want to try to achieve with your life. Basically, something that shows that your decision making is just not a spur of the moment. It is actually a long-term plan because that's going to that's going to give an indication of what kind of a person you are and this is what they're looking for. But mainly these first couple of questions is just going to be to kind of soften you up, to make you a little bit more relaxed. Then it is likely that they will go into a more technical part of the interview where they might ask you questions about, for example, your ATPL knowledge. It's likely that if you are coming in straight from your flight training, they are going to focus a lot on ATPL questions because you haven't got much experience to rely back on. Okay, so make sure that you've freshened up your ATPL knowledge. You know, it's likely to be some questions about aerodynamics. You know, what is a swept wing? Why is it swept? What is Mac Buffett? Uh, why do we have winglets? Uh, things like that, that you should be able to give a fairly straight answer to, all right? Um, they might also ask you questions about your current aircraft type. So if you've been doing your training on a Diamond or a Cessna, you should be able to, to explain to some detail about those airplanes. You know, what kind of speeds are you using on approach? What kind of high lift devices are they using? What are the common problems? Stuff like that. Because it's going to give an indication of how well read up you are on what you've been doing so far. And this is going to give a further indication about what kind of a student you will be when you get into the type rating situation. Okay? If you are type rated on a specific airplane, then you can definitely expect to get questions on that. You know, 737, tell me a little bit about your, you know, the, the hydraulic system of the 737. You know, what are the flight characteristics? Stuff like that. So you be prepared for that. Um, it's also likely that they will give you some questions about different scenarios. So say that you, you find yourself uh, flying over um, an area of the world, there's really bad weather below you, the cabin crew calls you up and they tell you that you have a passenger who is not feeling well. Uh, and you have a doctor on board, the doctor is saying that this passenger needs to get down on the ground as soon as possible. How do you react? Here, you have to take your time and you have to show them that you are thinking in a strategic way, right? First, fly the aircraft, make sure that one of you are dealing with the problem, the other one is flying the aircraft gather as much information as possible you know that includes the cabin crew the your um, first officer or captain uh, air traffic control get the weather you know, make sure air traffic control knows that you have a medical emergency uh, what kind of airports are around um, are they suitable to land because not only is it important that the passenger is getting uh, proper care, but it's also impo important that you are taking care of the aircraft and the crew and the passengers and making sure that everyone is safe on your way down to your diversion airport. So they will want to see that you are thinking strategically, that you have a decision-making model that works well. And all of this and this, the strategies to answer questions like this is described inside of this application. So check it out. Now, once that is done and the interview is, is over, right, um, you are likely to, to need to participate, for example, in a group exercise. Now, group exercises are different between different airlines. Like, once again, you need to research a little bit what you're getting into, but expect to get into a group of maybe five to 10 people. You will probably be given some kind of information before, you know, in each one of you individually. And then you will be tasked with uh, some kind of problem that you need to solve or discuss how to solve. So uh, they will want to see that you can share the information that you've been given, that you are working in a group towards achieving the common goal, that you're not stepping on people and that you're not being stepped on. Um, there's loads of things to think about when you're getting yourself into a group exercise. Um, do it to the best of your capability, work together, communicate as always. And um, then that's going to be judged accordingly. It's it's you know, it's probable that the outcome is not as important on, as in how you solve it. They're going to be looking at you as a team player and you as a group and see what the dynamics are. So once you've done that, uh, if you're successful at these stages and you've done the test, you might also be subjected to um, some, um, uh, some computer-based tests 
um, compass tests of different sites. Now, those kind of tests are not inside of the app. And the reason for that is because the, it's, it's very, very hard to prepare for those kind of tests. Now, there is a company called Sky Tests, I think, that do some quite good preparation of material for this. I haven't tried them myself, but uh, I've heard good things about it. So that might be a way to prepare for those tests as well. Otherwise, there are other providers. Not all of them are very serious, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, once all of this is done, if you've been successful at these stages, you are probably going to be uh, invited into the simulator test. Okay. Now, you are, it's likely that you have received some kind of preparation material when you were invited to the interview, which might have included things like flight patterns, speeds and stuff. So if that's the case, make sure that you have prepared and that you know those. Okay, that might be a good idea to maybe rent a simulator and go and practice it beforehand to make sure that you know it well. If not, you are likely to get it as part of maybe a few hours before your sim test so that you can go through it and try to adapt and remember as much as possible. When you get into the sim, it is largely going to be down to your MCC training. Okay, how you, for example, brief an exercise. Uh, your basic stick and rudder handling skills, your knowledge of IFR procedures like holdings, entry into holdings, and the ability you have to learn quickly from whatever material that you have been given. But make sure that you, you utilize your MCC skills here. Uh, they want to see you communicating, they want to see you helping and getting help from your colleagues. So the better you make him or her look, the better you will look, basically. Um, you, you know, make sure that you, you comply with rules and regulations. So if you're not stabilized, you go around. Down to the minimum, you don't see anything. You go around. Uh, you call for go around when needed. Make sure that you're stabilized. And all of these things, right? It's going to be fairly straightforward stuff. It's not going to be something that is really, really complicated. Once you're done with your sim test, that generally tends to be the last part of, uh, of your application. There might be a medical exam as well. The medical exam you're just gonna do with the doctors. There's not much you can prepare for there. And then it's just up to you to sit down and wait for the result, right? And the result is going to be largely dependent on how well you have prepared for this. So once again, do check out this app. Uh, it does cost a little bit of money, airlineprep.co.uk. Um, are working continuously to make sure that the information inside of this app is up to date and relevant to you. So check it out. Have an absolutely fantastic day. I hope this has helped to give you a better view of what you can expect. Do your absolute best. Remember that that's the only thing you can do, right? You can only do your best. And once you've done that, even if you're not successful, at least you've learned something. And the next interview, you will know more about what you can expect. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.